Arrest report, 10 September afternoon watch. On orders of district attorney, a four-man squad from this precinct entered the premises publicly known as the Flamingo Erotic Cinema and seized three cans of film constituting the print of a motion picture titled Orgy in the Office. Placed under arrest at the same time were Arthur N. Forestiero, 19, white American theater manager, Maureen Dominguez, 20, Filipino-American cashier, and Ronaldo Williams, 20, Negro-American. Forestiero and Dominguez were subsequently booked and processed, charged with the conspiring, cons conspiring to exhibit and charge admission for the exhibition of a pornographic motion picture. It is being subsequently discovered that Ronaldo Williams was not an employee of the Flamingo Erotic Cinema, but present partly to view the motion picture and partly to have conversation with Maureen Dominguez. Ronaldo Williams was released from custody and no complaint was issued. You got a minute? Never charged you? Misdemeanor? Nothing? Oh, no, nothing. They got nothing. I was I was behind the candy counter. So them dumb patties just assumed I was up to something. I come all the way down here for my arrangement. There's no charges. So I go back to them dumb patties because I wanted my watch, my wallet, and my money. The cops uh, put it in an envelope when they took it? Yeah. Give you a receipt. Oh, yeah. they, they give me back the receipt. Receipt, no money. Now, you tell me, what kind of receipt have you got to file a court order to get your own money back, huh? You're being shopped, Ronaldo. Hey, what? Well, they must think you can help them out uh, as a friendly witness. <laughs> they dream it. Look, you gonna call for me or what? Make you feel better. He won't do it. And how come? Because he's a second-rate walking chunk of... Oh, hi, Jerry. Is the judge still there? This is a matter that was kicked before the arraignment, right? You've got the wrong man, Mounty. This is a police matter. I wouldn't feel right about signing order. I don't have the jurisdiction. Oh, that's what I assumed. Just wanted to double check. <laughs> Thanks for the time, Your Honor. Bye-bye. What did you make me do that for? I took a shower today. So where'd we get to? Well, tomorrow morning I, I send you to legal aid. I'll file for a court order. When do I get my money? Three weeks. A month. But if I go sit with the officers and sign what they say, then I get to walk out of here with everything right now, right? And that's the law? Well, it depends. <laughs> my object all sublime, I shall achieve in time. To let the punishment hit the crime, the punishment hit the crime. And make his criminal pen unwillingly represent the source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. Twenty-seven bodies this morning, Judge. Got it. Watch your head. Watch your head. Keep it moving. Come on. Keep seven. Ah, good to see you again. Press bulletin number 484. This is the district attorney speaking. The arrest and seizure at the Flamingo Cinema do not represent a policy of individual harassment, but rather a commitment to the mandate of this office and the guidelines of state and federal authorities. Yes, ma'am. Black militant. All prisoners wishing to do so may apply for a pass to morning services of the following religious denominations. And Jesus said unto her, Go thou and sin no more. Then spake Jesus unto her, saying, I am the light of the world. I am Murray Stone. I'm a deputy public defender. I'll be representing most of you unless you have private counsel. Can I see the hands of anyone who expects to be represented by a private attorney? Okay, then we're all in it together. 
Now, I'm going to run down my thinking for you. Now, bear in mind, I'm an Easterner and I talk fast. Please don't take it as a sign of disrespect or a quick hustle. I need your trust, but I expect to have to earn it. Okay, so let's talk about bail. The DA in the course of a bail schedule. Each crime is worth so much on the list. And when I ask you how much bail you can make, I'm talking about 10% up front for the bondsman, and you don't get it back. Now, if you can't make any bail, let me know, and I'll put in a pitch for an OR release. That's a release on your own recognizance. It's rare, and it brings me to item two. Those are the OR applications you were handed out before. Now, fill them out. Don't snow the man, because if you do, he'll just find out about it, and he'll shoot you down, and the judge will follow his recommendations 99% of the time anyway. Also, the OR investigators are not fond of the outdoors. You know, they like to make phone calls. They want numbers of people who can vouch for you, not addresses. All right, item three, gentlemen, item three. Now, item three is your worst enemy, and that is no more or less than your mouth. Now, keep it shut. Don't discuss your case with anybody but your attorney. Now, when I say anybody, I mean cellmates, I mean co-defendants, I mean each other. Now, I'm not saying anybody in this tank is an informer or an undercover cop. I'm just saying it's common. And at best, if you're up to somebody, you're just making another witness for the DA. Now, don't do the DA's job for him. <laughs> now, you can all see this gorgeous young deputy marshal making a himself because he forgets I've got eyes in the back of my head. Which brings us to item four, to wit, the naps. Now the cops have a job to do, and sometimes they like to take the easy way out, but they're not attorneys, and their principal goal is to put you in, gentlemen, in. Don't underestimate them and don't try to outsmart them. They'll offer you an off-the-record conversation, they'll paint all kinds of pretty pictures of uh, suspended sentences and cases kicked down to misdemeanors, but the sad, ugly truth is that a cop is never off-duty. You have no right to privacy in jail, now that's what the cases say. But you do have a right to act like rich men and refuse to talk without your lawyer in the room. If you talk to the man, the man's going to just testify against you. Am I right, gorgeous? Absolutely wrong. Mm, just checking. All right. This is an arraignment court. We'll troop in there. You'll be read your rights and hear the charges against you. If you have any questions, ask him when we talk. All right. Nicholson. Look, in the first place, I never seen him on no motorcycle. Look, I, I seen this thing lying in the street. Nobody watching it. It was obviously valuable. So I, I wheeled it away looking for a cop. And I was looking for the cops when the cops hit on me. So, so I do a, a citizen's function, right? Returning lost property. What's wrong with that story? You want a jury trial right now? We got 12 good men right here. What do you say, fellas? Lock him up. Uh, uh, lock him up. All right, all right. Scratch that story. Okay. So what can you get for me, huh? I mean, I, I'm clean enough. You know, you could get uh, kicked down to a miss with time served. You know, maybe summary probation and no fine. Look, I've never been in trouble before. Yeah, you just picked up the language in the streets. <laughs> All right, look, I'll stroke the judge as hard as I can, but you better make some bail plan. Huh? Right. Bail is recommended at $5,000. You're charged with 11350 possession of heroin and 11351 possession for sale. For sale? When's that supposed to have gone down? It says on or about July 8th. It's like a buy program, undercover sale. I don't remember dealing that time. I hardly ever deal. You know where you were about then? July 8th? In jail, maybe? Bright. Not so awful bright, huh? <laughs> Can you make any bail? Well, I have seven dollars. Oh, I had $7 on me. Well, I can try for an alarm, but I won't lie to you, Billy. I doubt it. Too many priors. You're a hype and a rabbit. Nah. That's all right. The hell it is. All right. Look, when I get through here, I'll see what I can hustle for you, okay? Yeah, far out. Hello, man. Charles. Money. Money. Two letters. Have you seen Jean? No. Yes. Oh. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's the girl. Michelle? Jean Carey? Oh. Ah, again he didn't shave at home. Well, it was shaver job, so I job. <laughs> so passe. So why'd you give it up, Murray? Oh, you gotta be a fanatic. It was becoming the most important thing in my life. How many miles? What's more important? Ooh, I love him when he's cool. You must have a new girl. I'm a married man. Yeah, you got a wife. I'm a married man. Oh, it's so classy, huh? Anybody can order in French. Oh. Okay, Murray. <laughs> what do you need? How come you looked over the arraignments? 
I looked over to Raymond. What do you need? Well, you got this pure Mickey Mouse uh, complaint. Some kid hide was charged with 350, 351. It's a two baggy case. Uh, he's interested in getting into a methadone program. Learner will buy a kick down to a misdemeanor possession. I want to get him an OR and try for a uh, program. How about it? Well, can he make diversion? Because I'd want two years probation. And if he completes the program, the case is dismissed. Hey, come on. That's formal probation without a conviction. If he's busted again, he's boxing the two beefs. That's too much pressure for a hype. I can't deal, Murray. That's office policy right now. By order of Thomas Q. Rachel. Except no, sir. Of course, your boss doesn't mean that if I want to plead my client guilty to get a lesser sentence, all you prosecutors will turn deaf ears. Oh, well, as far as I know, that deal is still operative. Steak lunch? Yeah, steak and lunch with Thomas Q. All that white bread at one table. Yeah, I'm worried. It's not my fault that was born Protestant. No, it was your father's. You see, if I said your mother's, you'd have gotten mad. John T. Nicholson. Is that your true and legal name? Yeah. Mr. Nicholson has received complaint ways for the reading. Hearing is set for Division 12 on October 16th at 9 a.m. Bail, $1,000. Motion off the record for bail reduction. Off the record. Mr. Nicholson resides at 429 Adamo Boulevard. Has been in his present residence for three years. He's employed at Law Firm Plumbing and Heating. His mother is present in court and verifies his roots in the community. He's asking for a release on his own recognizance or $500 bail. I believe he has one prior. Two priors. Motion for no hour release is denied. Bail, $1,000. Henry Stampler, is that your true and legal name? Mr. Stamper has received a complaint and waves further reading of the charges. What's happening, Murray? Not a whole lot, Sergeant. Listen, Listen on this guy, Singer, Singer. you going to pitch for OR or uh, yeah, reduction of bail? Motion off I take it you have some advice. Off the record. Oh, we'd be just perfectly Stamper. happy to see him go out OR. Found Found yourselves a live one, huh? On probation and five-page rap sheet, and all of a sudden you don't mind. Well, this possibly could be helpful. I mean, the, the judge and the DA have okayed it. There's no objection from OR. Alex Singer. Okay, just keep him out of my neighborhood. Is that your true and legal name? Mr. Singer resides at 811 Bradford Court. Has been a resident of this city since 1971. He is currently unemployed. We ask for an OR release. Motion is granted. An attempt is being made to contact Mr. Bright's mother, who is a lifelong resident of this city. We ask for an OR release and failing that for a reduction of bail. Motion is denied. Bail is set at $5,000. So what's the outcome? The outcome is that you sit for nine days in the preliminary hearing. I need a lawyer for that, don't I? Unless you've got one in mind, you're looking at your lawyer. I'm friendly and you can't beat the price. Look, I'll be in to talk to you after I get the arrest report. Probably the top of next week. If anything comes up in the meantime, give me a blast, all right? All right. Usually, a meal of as good as this has to be paid for. And I mean paid for by having to sit through a long and boring speech delivered by a short and boring man. But it is your particular good fortune to be spared that penalty. This afternoon, you are graced with a speaker to whom economy of words and largesse of wit are as important as probity of judgment and that over-abused phrase, the majesty of the law. Pray silence, then, for our distinguished Associate Justice of the Appellate Court and a past president of this organization, the Honorable Frederick J. Holderlin. funny. No, I mean it. I feel funny. Make you want to think. Make me want to do anything but. Well... Let me be the first, huh? The first to what? Well, either way, live or die, there's going to be a vacancy on the appellate bench. I can't think of a worse time to discuss something like that, Will. I'm surprised that you I'll write it off to the stress of the moment. Yeah, I'd be grateful if you would. Nice to see you, youngster. 
He was as old as Blackstone and as young as the day after tomorrow. And in this age of conflicting values and rudderless ships of state, he was a Gibraltar of infinite worth and majesty. The governor has declared tomorrow to be a day of official mourning for Justice Holderland. Thank God they've got people down in the property booking office and managed to stay on the ball. This fellow with the sharp eye, Collins, only nine months on the force. I think it should be written up for a commendation. Anyway, the point is, we're getting names and places, and after a year, it's finally moving. How many names besides Bride? Three others. I've already started surveillance. You read my hieroglyphics? Mm -hmm. Anybody else on the force know about this? Not so far. My source is Colin Sargent. I told him to smother it until he heard from me. Well, why did he bring it to you? I mean, you especially. Owed me a couple. I cultivate them. I get laughed at sometimes, but look what can happen. We bust open a murder like this one, it's worth it. Okay. Uh, keep a tag on them over the weekend. Nothing promising by Monday night, we'll call them. Only not our people. Let Homicide handle it. Hasn't exactly been a banner year for them so far. Mm. Leonard, let me be the first of many. There were days when I thought we'd never turn this beauty. Bang! I drew the dragon lady. That's right. You want it out of arraignments. There's no place else to put you. Well, at least you can loaf until 11. That mark speed has been postponed. Yeah, she can loaf. I got clients to talk to. Sharon, let me at him. Oh, master criminals all. I hope you don't give me bad representation, but I hope so too, Maxwell, but I can't guarantee you won't. Look, you got two issues. One is illegal search, the other is proof of possession of the weapon. And as far as the burglary count goes... I didn't carry no weapon, I didn't burglarize, huh? So. The man's not claiming that you carry, just that you gave consent to enter the apartment. Nobody gave consent. The man hold a gun on me and he opened the door himself. Look, I believe it. That's not the way they're going to testify. I'll see you in court this afternoon. Hey. He's a lady judge, I find out. You just keep your shirt buttoned, Mark. She don't be partial, she'd rather get you different way. Ah, <laughs> uh, cause you get me right. Right. No joy. What, he make bail or what? Transfer to the 11th precinct. For what, he's got a prelim this week. He was never signed in here, Mr. Stone. Just detained for two hours. Well, it's probably over in the annex. Well, I couldn't tell you that. I wasn't on last night. You're welcome. Listen, I lost a body. William Bright. Remain seated. It's six See if you can run him down. Put away all reading matter. This court is now set. Do. People ready on case number 84112. Mrs. McArdle, did you get a look at the man who fled from the front of your store? Yes. Is he present here in court this morning? I, I, I think so. Would you point him out, please? I think. Uh, Your Honor, may the record reflect that the witness looked around the courtroom for several moments and pointed to a person in custody in the bullpen and not to my client. Uh, by the way, sir, what is your name? The record will not reflect that. Will counsel approach the bench? Whoever taught you how to prepare a witness? It was unforeseeable. I could foresee it. She'd hardly find her way to that stand. Well, it was an honest mistake. Then you shouldn't object to your cockeyed witness being identified as such on the record. Mrs. Stone, I want that kind of garbage on the record. It's untidy and it proves nothing. Then let's not have her identify him at all. I'd be satisfied with that. What are you suggesting, Judge? I'm suggesting we start from scratch. Strike everything after the question, did you get a look at the man who fled from the store? I'm afraid I would object to that, Your Honor. Untidy or not. Proceed. Uh, Mrs. McArdle, is this the man you saw fleeing your store? Yes, I think so. I object as leading and suggestive and move to strike the answer. The prosecutor's conduct is totally reprehensible. 
such acts were condemned in the Sobol case and unduly prejudiced my client. Now, let the record also reflect that the DA stood behind my client and pointed to him, and even then it took the witness several minutes to point to Mr. Fall. If the, if the prosecutor would like to testify, I want to... Stone. I don't like being footnoted on technicalities. This is all just backing and filling. It has nothing to do with the purpose of a preliminary hearing. I don't like to be hyperscrupulous, Your Honor. <laughs> don't, don't use that word with me. Mr. Stone, this hearing is not over. It does not end with this witness. My request stands. Stand. The record reflects that Mr. Fall was identified by the witness almost immediately. Seconds, not minutes. This hearing will proceed. I observed the defendant approach the door, look in both directions, insert a metal object into the door, and open it quickly. Mm -hmm. What happened then? Fearing for my own safety and that this is a high burglary area and that it was 11.30 at night, I ordered the defendant not to move and to keep his hands up. What did the defendant do? The defendant entered the apartment and closed the door. Mm -hmm. Officer, did you have any information regarding a recent burglary? Yes, sir. We received that at roll call. Uh, objection. Hearsay. Move to strike. Thank you. Admissible for probable cause only. Continue. Motion denied. Well, we had a description of a male Negro wearing a plaid shirt who had stolen a watch from a store about two weeks ago. The defendant matched the description and the store is only several blocks away. Did you knock? Yes, sir. And after a few seconds, the defendant answered. He opened the door. Did you see anything? Objection. Uh, no compliance with PC 844. Denied. Officer, you are conducting an investigation, isn't that correct? Uh, objection to the court's question is being leading and suggestive. Overruled. Answer, please. Yes. Officer, after he opened the door, what happened? I proceeded to enter the apartment and I saw in plain view a watch lying on a living room table. Uh, object as no consent given and moved to strike the observation of the officer. Also, no compliance with PC 844. Denied. That objection has been overruled, and you are trying my patience, Mr. Stone. Officer, did you ask for and receive permission to enter the defendant's apartment? Uh, again, I most respectfully object as being leading and suggestive. Also, in that my client was not given his Miranda rights. They need not be given where searches are concerned, and no statements are being offered. Overruled. Mr. Stone, do not interrupt this proceeding again. You will get your chance to cross-examine the officer at the proper time. Officer, after you retrieved the watch, did you find anything else? I found a gun in the bedroom. Object and move to strike the answer and suppress the introduction of any weapon, which I note the prosecutor is about to attempt to introduce under the Chamel ruling. I'm sorry, Your Honor. May these items be marked for identification. Yes, Mark, and People's Exhibit 3 and 4, motion denied. Mr. Stone, take your seat. The next time you interfere with a direct examination, you'll have to expect consequences. No further questions. Mr. Stone. Did you have your gun drawn when you knocked? Well... Irrelevant. Your Honor, it is relevant. If consent is alleged and guns were exposed, then consent, assuming arguendo my client gave it, would have occurred under submission to authority. Oh, well, that's the question. No, sir, I did not have my gun drawn. After you entered the apartment, you arrested my client without a warrant, correct? People wish to be heard? Uh, asked and answered? Sustained. Mr. Stone, this line of questioning is time-consuming and not productive. Discontinue it. Did you ask my client to sign a consent to search form? Mrs. Stone, are you ready for the consequences? No. Why not? I don't know what the consequences are. Were you in uniform, officer? Yes. Was the alleged consent to search tape recorded? Seal the courtroom. I knew she was looking to jug him. Marshal, Mr. Stone is not allowed to use the telephone. I'm holding him in contempt. Marshal, place Mr. Stone in custody. Bail is set, $500. His case is trailed until Monday, 2 p.m. Court's adjourned. How do you do? My name is William Schluckman, and I'm a public offender. Now, let me run it down for you. First and foremost, don't cop to the heat because they're all honkies. First, last, and always. And they're just looking to drop you in the joint. Now, I've just taken a five-day fall myself, so I know what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, not bad, bro. <laughs> not bad. <laughs>
one day out of here and you burn. What am I going to do with you? Come on, call my boss, will you, gorgeous? Now, you know I'd like to, and you know I can't. That lady doesn't want you out of here in no habeas corpus. She wants you to spend the night with us. Now, you signed up for the tour, and the marshals will be here any minute. Hey, you remember a guy in here last week named Bright? Last week. Anything unusual about him? He's about 22, beard, long hair. 22, long hair and a beard. <laughs> I wouldn't have any trouble picking him out of the crowd we handle. No, you know. Uh, guys get lost in the jail system, Murray. It happens. That one guy was floating around for two months before his lawyer found him. Yeah, if I had you on the stand, I'd open you up like a can of anchovies in about a three minutes. Oh, Murray, what a way to talk to a buddy. Well, go make a nice arrest. Should I watch TV in the morning or is this another massage parlor? Isn't it great to know that your 18-year-old kid could walk down the street without being massaged to death by some maniac? You might just watch TV tomorrow. Yeah. I just might do that. Uh oh Looks like this one had a song. <laughs> Hey, Murray, you know that guy you were asking about? Yeah. He's on the eighth floor. Rachel had him sequestered. Him? For what? I have no idea, but something big is going down. That much I can tell you. Hey, Stone. Come on, you may bail. Huh? How'd you hear? Somebody called me. Sounded like a hoodlum. Name don't matter. Just call me gorgeous. Fellow inmate? No, you got it the first time. Contempt. Whew. Gonna be disbarred? No, uh, I'm gonna have to apologize. <laughs> and of course you'd rather be disbarred. Okay, let's wait for two. Fade up on one and two. This is William Bright, sometime musician, sometime waiter, often unemployed. Last week he was arrested on narcotics charges and held to await trial an all-too-common story. But it has taken a turn in recent days that may change it into something far from common. Dwight Healy has the story. During a routine check of Bright's personal possessions, Officer Dale Collins of the property booking office came across a ring with an unusual design. He'd seen this design before, he thought, on television. Only when he had noticed the initials TC inside the ring did the truth begin to dawn on the young officer. What happened next, Mr. Caporni? Officer Collins contacted me, we checked it out, and it was, in fact, a Super Bowl ring that was missing from the personal effects of the late Tommy Cicero. Take one. Is it possible that after 14 months, there's a break in the murder mystery that's hung over this city like a layer of smog? Film one. We've now spoken with Mr. Bright at some length, and through several intensive sessions. Oh, you no and good, miserable... I think we've come miserable. up with some very interesting little bits of information. As a result of these intensive sessions, Caporni last night led a dozen police officers on a roundup that produced three more arrests. Rod Brainer, sure. Monty Lease, and Felix Escobar, sometime musicians and once co-owners of the organic restaurant hey, for which Escobar? Bright worked as a waiter, were taken into custody. You, Bruce? They will be booked, from the best authority we have, Are you Rod on Brainer? suspicion of the murder of Tommy Bruce? Cicero. Huh? Anybody here from Rolling Stone? Hey, that's enough. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere, buddy. That's enough pictures. Hold it. Dwight Healy at the county jail. Run the pump, dummy! Sorry. Oh. Hi, Andy. Bye, Mimi. Second Mary 102, two Mary in the Hey, man. How are you? Oh, item three. Did item three skip your mind? Item three? It bores me to think about it. I say it so often, keep your mouth shut, don't do their job for them. They had nothing to do with my kids? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, sure enough. Okay, we cannot unring the bell, so let's move on. You talk to the officers. 
Yeah. You talked to Mr. Caponi of the DA's office. Did you yeah. waive your rights to an attorney? They didn't give me no rights. You signed a statement? Yes, you did. I just read it. It's this far from a confession. Yeah, but I didn't do it. No, no, never mind. We can't go into that now. All right, look. Do you want our office to represent you on this beat? No, not your office. I want you. You're a straight dude. You're a straight dude. What makes you think you're such a judge of human nature? You don't know who you're talking to. I could be anybody. I'm in trouble, huh? Trouble. The man was found tied to a tree at the top of a cliff. He'd been hacked to ribbons and he'd been set on fire. Did you have anything to do with it? I didn't see what he looked like after. That kind of stuff makes me throw up. I had nothing to do with the killing. You were there. You and the other three came back in your car. Yeah. Who drove? Uh, who drove? Uh... Brainerd drove. Wright was tripping out with his heavy comatose. He woke up in the car the next morning. It was parked in front of his mother's house. And he found the ring in the back seat. Did his mother see him? No, they don't get along. He didn't make any attempt to contact her. He just went home. Good morning, brother. Hi, Al. How are you? Hi. So what do you think we got? Not guilty, if he's telling the truth. Namely, that he drove up there on orders of Brainerd, that they were already there along with Cicero, that he didn't want to watch what was happening, and he dropped the pills to blot it out. But he didn't know what they were planning. Well, that's what he says. He also says he wants me to defend him. I know it's not my turn to go back up, but I was just wondering if you'd have any problems with that. So where are you now? Just started doing prelims. You're not doing this just to get away from the dragon lady, are you? No, I think I'm gonna see if I can get enough affidavits to get her out from behind that bench, but that's on my own time. Well, I can't take you out of prelims altogether. That caseload is worse than ever. But if Hoke has no objections, and if that's what your client wants, we can push you up in the Superior Court for just for this one case. Why, it's gonna be a Hummer, all right. Yeah. A lot of coverage. Probably a hermetically sealed courtroom, defendants in chains, the whole musical comedy bit. Oh, what's a musical comedy without a guy from Brooklyn? You're old enough to remember Billy Sunday? His punching bag had sin written on it. What you got on yours? Everlasting. You are the frozen daiquiri, aren't you? You know, Rathman said you were ready to kill somebody this afternoon. Tell you why? All you had to do was mention Ray Blythe, and I knew why. Hi, boss. Gene. You know... I think you're slightly full of it, but I also think you're bright. I know you're a good lawyer. Thank you. You know, Hank Stapleton is very interested in you. He thinks you have potential as a political candidate. I think he's right. I also think that I'm the best man qualified to fill Freddie Halbert's position on the appellate bench, but I didn't think so. You know, it's not all that funny. I'm not a bit ashamed of my record. I've run on it many times. No, I'm not laughing at you. You make a very good judge. Well, Stapleton has a lot to do with who the governor appoints. And I have a lot to do with who I appoint as acting DA for the next two years if I go up on the bench. So I've made him an offer. I've offered him you. Sounds sexy. <laughs> Whatever turns you on, youngster. But of course, you need to be a little more conspicuous choice before I can appoint you. However, Fortune has just dropped a very conspicuous murder trial on our desk this week. The first one since the reinstatement of the death penalty. That's your point. Uh, He's been working on that for more than a year. Well, it. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's just a question of uh, changing spots. You'll be chief prosecutor and he will be uh, associated with you. I don't think we'd better call him assistant. Those Latins are touchy. Now, how do you feel about asking for the death penalty? I can hack it if it's called for. Good. So, Gene, do uh, I have your permission to hand you the top spot in a star trial and maybe bump your career ahead about 15 years? I mean, would that be okay? Be okay. Hey, Mary. Hey, look at you, Milt. You off duty? Yeah, for about an hour. You don't look it. <laughs> Can we talk here? Um, Maybe you better no. get in. We're right around the block. How's it going? You get me some more clients? Yeah, more than you can handle. 
Yeah, I got this kid bright. Yeah, I heard about that. I don't envy you. I saw what they did to Cicero. Did you see that? No. Well, you ought to go down to friends that can pull some of those photos. Really animals. 99% of my clients are animals. I wanted to talk to you about the night you busted Bright. How did it work? Was it a straight collar? Well, my partner was playing buyer. He signaled me. I, I came around a corner. I said, freeze. Did he freeze? What's the point of that? Uh, just bear with me, all right? Yeah, sure he froze. Uh, there were two of them. The other guy took off. We chased him a little ways. We know him. We'll pick him up next time he shows. Bright didn't run. Where was he standing? He was up against this wire fence. It's a... It's a fence that runs along the front of scrap, scrap iron place. Chicken wire? He could have taken that ring off and shoved it through the chicken wire or something, couldn't he? I mean, he had enough time to dump it if it was worrying him. Yeah, he had enough time. Is that your defense, man? The reason you didn't ditch that damn ring is the reason we catch most of your clients in the first place. They're just plain dumb. The dumbs. It's the worst disease down here than sickle cell anemia. The galloping dumbs. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'll see you. Yeah, I'll see you. Don't worry. I'll keep him out of your neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, you do that. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm Clifford Wilson. I'm a deputy public defender. I'll be handling your arraignments today. But since our office is already representing your uh, co-defendant, we have a conflict of interest. So the uh, court will be uh, appointing lawyers for you. You already have a lawyer. Really? Yes, sir. My sister has retained a Mr. Riefler. Gordon Riefler? That's right. Oh, well, that's uh, fine. I'm glad to hear that. Well, anyway, as long as I'm here, uh, there's no harm in reminding you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. If we choose to speak, what we say may be used against us. We have the right, right to an attorney, attorney at all stages, stages of the proceedings. If we, we cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for us. We, we have, have the right, right to refrain from testifying. If we, we do testify, we may be subject to cross-examination. Beautiful. Obviously, you know all your rights. Yes, sir. We've heard them innumerable times. Well, I commend you on your knowledge. Uh, gentlemen, I shall uh, see you in court. Until then, sir. Hey, how's it going, babe? Oh, I've just come from talking to the Jolly Brothers. It is to make you shiver. Uh, hey, Gordon Reaper's come out of the woodwork. He's going to defend him? Yeah. Uh, they haven't got enough trouble, huh? What's all that? Pictures of uh, Cicero, the way they found them. Oh, yeah? I'd pass it up if I were you, Cliff. Pass? How are you coming? I gotta interview this retard, and then I gotta go stroke Madame Fournier. <laughs> Life is just one giddy round, Joey. So, I'm from Mars. I'm a Martian. I know nothing. Now, you tell me why you shouldn't be sitting in this jail. On the night of the killing, April 17th, about 8 o'clock, where were you? About 8, I was at my place practicing. Practicing the guitar? Yeah. All right, and... Brainer came upstairs and stuck his head in and he goes, we need your car about 11 at Nanotchka's. Nanotchka's is the restaurant they used to own. Yeah, but there's nothing there anymore. Go on. Anyway, he said, we need your car about 11 and don't be late. And I said, yeah, I would. Why? I already told you why, really? man. I'm from Mars. Well, those three dudes are into a very physical trip. A couple of times while I was working for them, we had words, man. I mean, they can be real weird. Give me an example. I told you that kind of stuff gets me in the stomach. Well, the simplest way to put it is that they like to play a scary movie with you. Tie you up and whatnot. Use a belt on you and all that good trash. Whip you with a belt? Yeah. They did that? You got marks? Nah, I don't think so. All right. So you agreed to meet them at 11 in Anachka's because you were afraid of what they might do to you if you didn't. Okay? How are they going to get up there in the first place? Oh, in this dude's car. Big car. Tommy Cicero's car? Yeah, football guy. How did you know? Well, I washed out the window. Who is Tommy Cicero, Billy? Uh, what position did he play? I don't know. I just know he was a star. Who is Daryl LaMonica? Daryl LaMonica. Probably another player. Who is Dick Butkus? Who is Larry Zonka? Who is O.J. Simpson? Mm. Who is Nate Creeley? Lead guitarist with the Allegheny Trail. Where's he from? Uh... Muscle Shoals in Alabama. Who's Tom Seaver? Who's Oscar Peterson? What is Mick Jagger's wife's name? <laughs> B. 
Bianca. Who wrote A Farewell to Arms? Who wrote Steppenwolf? Oh. Herman Hess? Are you shucking me? Hey, man, come on. I am God, and if you lie to me, I'll kill you. All right. So you went up there at 11. What did you see? I saw uh, this guy and the other guys. I want the name of every human being you observed on the back patio, on the cliffside patio of the deserted restaurant formerly known as Nanachka's. Tommy Cicero, Brainerd Lease, and Esquivel. Period. Nobody else. Nobody else. All right, what were they doing? Dancing. All four of them? All four of them. Uh, Felix was playing his wooden flute. What kind of a dance was it? You know what kind of dance it was? No, a lot of things I do know. I know who wrote A Farewell to Arms. I know who Kaiser Wilhelm was. But why three small-time freaks were dancing around on a cliff with last year's most valuable player? That I'm counting on you to tell me. Well, Rod was into Mahapran Sufism pretty heavy, you know. Oh, he was, huh? Yeah. And that is what? It's dervish dancing, man. From the northern mountains in the Hindu Kush. Lisa and Esquivel went to Tashkent a couple of years back. Right in the middle of all that. Salmon pink and purple. Hills. They stoned all the time. Because you could, you, could, you could score from the gurus. And all that good trash. What would you do if you went there, Billy? Uh, do? I wouldn't do anything, man. I'd just be. That would be enough for you? Yeah, that'd be enough for me. What about Cicero? What did he have to do with all this? Cicero. He bought some stuff off Felix, and Felix introduced him to Rod and Marty. Tommy Cicero was a doper? Yeah. You have to say that. Anyhow, he made his own connections on the road, and after a while, we used to cop off him. Oh. He had us up to these parties. At his house? What? At his house? Oh, no. No. Never his house. He had this little apartment off the turnpike. You know that chick that gives the traffic in the late news? Huh? Well, she used to make it. We met movie stars there, man. We met Larry Hale. We met Donna Watson. <sighs> Boy, we did more than meet Donna. Tommy Cicero. What else happened at these parties? Well, at first it's real cool. You know, nothing heavy, nothing weird, and then Rod turned everybody on to the dance. And the dance is beautiful. It's just beautiful. But at a certain point, you're supposed to sacrifice something. When the mad mother takes over, Supposed to sacrifice the living, so uh, the rest of you can get it on better. Is a ritual sacrifice to the mad mother? Yeah. And the reward is that your sexual prowess is increased? Yeah, or you know, if you didn't have it in the first place, it just gets better. Did they kill something at these parties? Yeah, one time they killed a goat. And they've killed cats. You know, more than one. You're supposed to kiss it uh, in a certain place, and then you kill it. Now take the Martian by the hand and lead him up to the cliff and back of Nanachka's and tell him exactly what you saw. They danced. Rod and Monty were chanting mantras. Then Rod said she won't be satisfied with lower animals. And then Cicero says, right on, you know, the way straight folks say right on with the fact is they don't know what the hell you're talking about. And then Rod, like, hit him with a chunk of wood. Hit Cicero. And Rod shouts, everybody. Monty flashes out his blade. Felix picked up another piece of wood. And what did Billy do? Billy. What, me? I ran back to the car and threw up. Took three mess, 
turned my back on the whole thing, and very soon I crashed out. You didn't see anybody tie Cicero to a tree and set fire to him? No. But I did see some reflections in the car windows. Now, Billy, you've had shrink tests, I know. Yeah. You know, where they show you uh, some pictures and ask you what you what you see. Yeah. Why don't you take a look at some of these? One at a time. And tell me what you see. Uh, it's in front of this building. Something Bogart. That's nothing but chimneys. Hundreds of chimneys. Where is that? Paris. Mm. Oh. Charlie. Charlie. There's a sick man here. You wouldn't shuck a Martian, would you, Billy? Why is the hold up? Oh, it's a little war of nerves. She's making me wriggle. I'm sorry it's affecting your procedure. I ain't going nowhere, am I? They want me, looks like. Look. I think we're home free on the burglary. As for the other counts, I see them all falling under a totally illegal search and seizure. They can't get around it, they'll deal. Look, I don't even fire that gun, man. I... I don't even fire that gun, man. I don't even have bullets for the rascal, even. It belonged to my wife's brother. But I am a repeater myself, man. Look, I go to trial with my record, hey. We'll see. We'll see. Stingers all cigarettes, put away. No. I'll move money time. Your Honor, may I address the court? Yes. Uh, with respect to the comment I made on Friday, I wish to apologize to the court. It was said in heat and not in earnest and was both ill-advised and inaccurate. It betokened a lack of respect. And while I may disagree with the court from time to time with its procedures, I do not disrespect it. This apology purports to be made in good faith. And I accept it as such. Although to my ears, Mr. Stone, you seem to be evincing a general respect for courts and their procedure, and not a specific respect for this court and its procedure. Having been informed by the district attorney that his witness received a minor injury this morning, will not be able to testify. I will trail this case until Monday morning, providing your client waits time. Does he do so? Yes. Uh, would the court reduce Mr. Fall's bail to $500? Uh, no objection. Motion granted. People ready on case number 84228. Uh, your Honor, due to budget difficulties, you do again? the witnesses necessary for a proper presentation... Last little cuff on the back of the head. ...price are unable to appear. I'm dead sorry, man. For request to Suppose I didn't wave time. Hmm? Ten days are long up. I could walk right out. If you didn't wave, the case would be dismissed, but they just rearrest and start all over again. This way I got the bail dropped. And that phony story about the cop being injured is a pretty clear sign we can hustle a deal for you. It looks like the DA isn't happy with the case. Then, um, Maxwell better sign the waiver. Yeah. Okay. You explain that to my wife, please. Yeah, sure, I'll be glad to. District Attorney Thomas Rachel announced the prosecution team for the Brainerd trial this morning. Eugene Carey, son of the former ambassador to Brazil and a four-year veteran of the District Attorney's office, will be heading up the team. Deputy District Attorney Leonard Caporni will be backing him up. Tom, how in God's name could you do this to me? 
It was not a decision I made lightly, Leonard. Of that, you can be sure. I don't care how it was made. It was a bad call. Leonard, you know as well as I do that a chief prosecutor needs an associate of enormous capacities in a case like this. It would have been better to put you in that spot and then have no backup man for you. Face it. You're one of a kind. Look, this is double talk. I've witnessed this case from the day it happened. I cultivated the cops at the property booking office, and I made the arrests. The world press will be covering this trial. The press of the entire world. And you think so little of this case, you're willing to entrust it to a, some squash player. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with playing squash. I play myself. You ought to. It's not how little I think of this case. It's how much I think of you. Tom, I'm considering resignation. And I'm considering it very seriously. Well, that would be a grievous loss at this point, Les. I hope you decide against it. I'd like to arrange for the haircut as soon as possible. Also, I'd be grateful if you could find Mr. Bright a similar place of detention, but removed from the co-defendants. Well, we're contemplating a motion to sever, so the properties, it would seem to me. Yeah, well, whatever you can do, okay? Right, thanks. Well, a great day so far. One victory after another. Two continuances, one private counsel substitution, and one ironclad alibi. Question, that's me. How did you come into possession of the property? Answer. Audacious laid the TV set on me and split. Audacious? It's the only name he gave my client before he laid the TV on him and split. He's <laughs> a last name or a first name? Too common. Probably an alias. Well, obviously, you got yourself a clear cut Sodi defense. A what? Sodi. Look it up. Spelled S O D D I. Sodi. Some other dude did it. Gotcha. Your Honor, may we be heard off the record? We will adjourn to chambers. Because of the caseload, we are disposed to enter into a plea bargain at this time. What exactly are you looking for, Murray? What am I looking for? Okay. You can't make the burglary based on your ID witness, right? The other charges are all within a legal detention and search. Chamel included also no consent. What am I looking for? A kick out with stipulation of probable cause and goodbye. I don't read it that way. You might win in the burglary charge. I'm certain the second officer can shore up the search. Oh, come on, knock it off. Do you want to deal this case out, or do you want to argue its merits? Now, what are you offering? You can cop to the gun charge. I'll go for a dismiss on the others. With an open-end probation and sentencing. Uh-uh. Smoke it someplace else. My character is not going to go for any open end. Okay. I'll close the end with a commitment. A bullet. A year? No. If you want him to give up his constitutional rights on the search thing, he has to have a misdemeanor with credit for time served. Now, that's all this case is worth. Impossible. All right, then let's finish this prelim. Counsel, sit down. All right, now. This is not a righteous burglary. Search leaves a lot to be desired. What do you say he takes the gun charges in this? I'll give him a three-month talk. How about an OR release pending sentence? No way. He served 15 days on this farce already. All right. I'll give him credit for his lousy 15 days. Agreed? Is there something wrong, Mr. Stone? No, it's just perfect. All right, we'll see what he says. No felony, no penitentiary? That's the offer. You say go for it? Uh, forget the suppressed motion? I have an obligation to report it to you, Maxwell. What I'd love to say is don't go for it. I can't guarantee that we'd win a constitutional fight, but there's always the chance. It's your credibility against the cops. By all that time, I still sit. I go for this, I'm out in one month or two. You say it is a farm, don't you? And that was born on a farm. And uh, if we, we make this battle you talk about, when time come to put me in for the wristwatch, won't be no more fun. Don't take it personal, man. You give me good representation. Yeah, well, you got exactly what you paid for. Hell no, man. Uh, you got me the fab. I thank you. 
No calls. Obvious exception. Come on in. Bob, what do you think? It's you. Kind of spacious, but cute. When'd you move? Three guesses. You haven't even installed the bar yet. You don't drink anything but cream soda, do you? No, nothing but cream soda. Come on, sit down. You waiting to be asked? I'll see if I can scrounge up some coffee. Oh, stop fussing. I'm fine. What can I do for you? You okay, Murray? Huh? You having a toughie? Now, look, I'm swell. Will you talk to me? All right. I've been up to the DA's office most of the morning, and we've taken a strong look at what we've got so far. And by the way, this is off the record. Yeah, no sweat. All right, in that context, and only in that context, we'd like to see your client get whatever break there is to be gotten. He's a born loser, or at any rate, a born follower, and where the law makes no distinction, we'd still like to if we can. Such as? We feel he'd be a usable witness for us. <laughs> usable? He'd be adorable. Make me an offer. Well, naturally, total immunity's out of the question, but we might not choke too hard on a kick down to second degree with recommendation from five to life. You want him to be a people's witness, and you'll kick him down from death to five. It's fair. You fought for it, huh? So you owe me one. Yeah, you probably think it is fair, Gene. You're what they call prosecution-minded. Well, Murray, what do you suggest as a reward for confessing murder? Two weeks in Honolulu? Well, you see, there's a small technicality which review might even hold as a supersession in importance, which is namely that the schnook didn't do it. Oh, Murray! Never mind, oh, Murray. He's not guilty whether or not it fits into everybody's schedule. You want him to take the stand for you? Simple. Drop the charges, lay a subpoena on him. He'll sing. He'll sing like Joni Sutherland, La Stupenda. Don't expect a dance of joy out of me for an offer like that. You're gonna have to work a little harder if you want to be a big hero on television. Why are you biting my ear so hard? Because I'm up to here with deals. My office is jammed like a packing box full of dead fish with deals. Copying people to lessons, not because they're entitled, but because the fuzz didn't do their homework. Giving up a defendant on a bum rap because that's the bummer you want covered up. Seven months, five years, eight to twenty. What are we talking about? We're talking about human beings. Maybe you're not in the proper frame of mind. Oh, but I am. You could talk to me. In fact, talk to me. Tell me about the Lockhurst adjudication. Oh, for the love of... Oh, come on, don't be modest. Chairman of the board of a chain of nursing homes for old people steals a quarter of a million dollars. In chambers, Mr. Carey, Mr. Lockhurst, Mr. Lockhurst's attorney, and Judge Harmon L. Thring all sit down and thrash it out man to man. Mr. Lockhurst cops. A ten-year max. Ten years. That's what's called for. What does he get? Does he get ten days? Does he get ten minutes? He gets 18 months suspended, no probation, a $5,000 fine, and he promises to make restitution if humanly possible. Which for Lockhurst is no sweat because he's probably not human. Next afternoon, I had an appearance in the good Justice Strings courtroom. Probation and sentencing on Harlow James Riverston. Occupation works in a car wash. All right, okay. Every time one of my garbage losers in that tank says, look like the bigger thief always gets away, I say, man, don't throw those cliches at me. I say that. I look him right in the eye and say it. Bright is not guilty. I'm pleading him not guilty. We do not have a deal. Good afternoon. dismissal motions, plea information, and whatever. Under the heading whatever, I'd like to go over what I have in mind for my courtroom. We're going to use 196. That's the biggest. It's 100 spectators plus 20 press. Now, I've been through one like this before, so I want to admonish you all right now on the matter of freebies. Now, I don't care who you slip tickets to. The seats are gone when they leave them. Uh, if they get into the morning session, it's no guarantee they're going to get into the afternoon. But there are going to be lines of people along both sides of that 10th floor corridor and... I don't want to have it said that I'm running my court like a nightclub with a rope up. Any questions? All right. Any dismissal motions? <laughs> Mr. Stone, I'll consider it in due course. <clears throat> Your Honor. Mr. Riefler, you leave yours in your other pants? Your Honor. Mr. 
Stone. Mr. Carey, Mr. Courtney. I am withdrawing from this case. A surprising and dramatic new development in the Cicero murder trial today. Dwight Healy has the story. For one attorney to withdraw in favor of another is nothing newsworthy. But when Gordon Reifler, representing three out of the four defendants, made his withdrawal, he ushered in a new member of the trial cast sure to hold the audience. Mr. Reifler. Reifler, please. Uh, Mr. Reifler, uh, could we talk a moment? No, I'm sorry. I have nothing to say until I can with Mr. Benson. This afternoon, Jules Benson, probably the most talked about attorney since Clarence Darrow, confirmed he was taking over the defense of Brainerd, Lee, and Esquivel. Good morning, Mr. Benson. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Benson, uh, Dwight Healy. Before anything else, I must talk to my clients. Well, sir, the average size of your fees has never been a secret. Then maybe we can... That's not what I'm going to talk to my clients about. Yeah, but who will be paying your fee? Mr. Riefler... Mr. Riefler called me on this case because he happens to know I'm a sucker for it. In the same way, I happen to know that there are all, all kinds of doctors who fly all over the world just for a chance at a certain kind of an operation. Now, money is secondary. I've got plenty of money. I'm also aware of the fact that there are all too many indigent defendants who cannot possibly begin to afford the services of an attorney in my uh, bracket. Excuse me. Well, that was Jules Benson, published author and a lawyer of an international reputation. Working with him will be two partners in his local firm, Leon Zuckerwar and Norman Haight. This is Dwight Healy at the county jail. Mr. Esquivel. And Mr. Lees. Hello, Mr. Lees. And Mr. Brady. Ah, Mr. Brainerd. Gordon tells me you're very shrewd. I'm not always in accord with... I don't give a damn what you're in accord with. Reefla said you had an offer. Sure. Let's sit down. Yeah. My uh, publisher is anxious to nail down the rights in your life story. Stories, I should say. I myself, having some few insights into uh, Cicero, I met him a couple of times. I myself would be the principal author of any book or articles or both. In exchange for which, and in lieu of any advance either to me or to you, my services on this case. Thereafter, all profits to be equally divided amongst all parties. Now, was that uh, substantially as was represented? Substantially? Reefler never got into foreign rights or TV or movies. No, or coloring books or uh, learn at home cassettes, no. Well, Gordon may have had the idea that you were preoccupied with your trial at the moment. I was when he was handling it. A quality advocacy like yours is a tonic. Anybody told me four years ago that Edna O'Toole would be out roaming the streets today, 29 months on an arson, three dead. Let me caution you, Rod. The O'Toole case is not a good analogy. There, the principal victim was a nice, uninteresting wholesale pot supplier named Mr. O'Toole. Here, we've got a dead living legend to contend with. I'm not worried. Good, that's the spirit. Now we can say way back into the foreign rights, uh, etc. <laughs> well, here, have a look at a rough draft of the contract. Peruse it at your leisure, if you'll excuse the expression. Now, would it be all right with you if we spent a little time discussing what exactly took place on top of that cliff? to second. The big deal is that these depositions may turn out to be accurate. Tom, it's entirely possible the officers I've cultivated had no knowledge. Well, then... Murray! Murray! Up here. What's that? Uh, I just wanted to... Hell, I feel ridiculous talking to a roof like this. Go upstairs. Turn left through the kids' room. It's so neat. I expected a place to be a wreck. Why a wreck? Oh, I don't know. I figured you'd had a couple of girls over and they'd been messy. I did, and they were. I cleaned it up. Murray, I kind of sounded out Winchell, and I get the feeling he wouldn't be violently opposed to your coming back. Uh, it wouldn't take much of an apology. I'm out of the nest, Larry. You're supposed to stay out once you escape. If you were so dragged with it, why'd you stay as long as you did? It was warm, like any nest. I don't know. What is it? You're not supposed to go back. You're supposed to go up or down, but you're not supposed to go back. Who said that? I don't remember. Rudolph Hess? 
<laughs> the old courtroom sketch. This the first time you ever been up before me? I don't know, Your Honor. What time you usually get out of bed? Whack! Oh, with the pig bladder. Your Honor, after nine years, I found myself a defendant who's not guilty like you've never seen that guilty. What do you want to cop him to? I don't want to cop him to anything. Whack! Oh. See the nice full moon? Court must be in session. You're really breaking my heart. Benson must have gotten to Billy's mother. Come in to see him on a pass with her. Sold him a bill of goods. So Benson got to his mother. You've been out chased. It happens. I want to know what your plans are. What my plans are? Oh, I don't know. I'll charge some new clothes and become a divorce attorney. I'll handle my own first for practice. Attorney, screw thyself. Murray, you're making me nauseous. Why? What have you got against divorce? Where else would you get waitresses? I'll see you. All right, if he wants a chaser, he'll get one. some money on you and encourage you to do your maternal duty. Listen, monkey face, I don't need lessons from you or anybody else about nothing maternal. That boy's probably better off in jail. But the bitter truth is, he's had all the chances from me he's gonna get. And I don't give a calcified damn what happens to him. Okay, fine. As long as you don't, then uh, give me the same shot you gave Benson. Look, ask to see him. Carry a message in for me so he'll take me off the no list. Wait, 99. I need a dollar for gas. They put out the lights about 10. Can you get off work early? Nope. All right. Where's your boy? Okay. What do you want to see him for? Just a dog in the manger. Come on, cut me down. Oh, don't be insulting. Come on. She wasn't in here long, was she? Yeah. That's twice in three days. It's more than I've seen her all year. Ain't no big thing. What did he promise you? Who? Do we have to go from scratch? What did Benson say he'd get for you? He said it was a strong case. We'd be a lot stronger if we all stuck together. You feel any stronger? Hey, he's a big dude. He's got all kinds of clout. Look, man, I know what I said, how I wanted you and everything, but there's one thing about Rod. And that is, he is smart, and if he wants this Benson to represent him because he thinks he can get him out from under the gas chamber. Well, what does that have to do with you? He said the DA would go for the change. Why? Benson said they don't want a lot of stuff about Cicero to get out. You know, the parties and the goats and all that good trash. And you'll be cop the second degree along with them. Billy, you've got four felony priors at nine years if there are saints on your probation board. Hey, Stone, it beats the other. Billy, you're not guilty. Come on, man. When they want you, they get you, and they want me. You know what Benson said? He said, you could have got me to stay on the first. Billy, what do I have to do to make you believe that the only chance you've got on God's earth is to plead not guilty? You're crazy. Not guilty. They don't like it when you do it for real, man. I know I've been here, so don't you tell me. Oh, you've been here. Yeah, I've been here. Where have you been, babe? In juvie detention? You did county time, you did farm time. It wasn't so bad, was it? Sort of like what? The uh, Explorer Scouts, the cold showers. Yeah. Have you been to the joint, babe? 
the state penitentiary. Huh? Huh? Hello. What did I say you get? Nine years? Nine years is three times the lifespan of the average informer in the joint. Billy, look at me. You get busted. They find a ring. You give them names. You give them locations. And the day you did that, you became a talker. There were lifers who were waiting for the day for a talker to walk in there. There were guards who hate talkers. There were trustees who hate talkers. And there will be Brainerd, Lease, and Escobar who will be there because of you. Billy, they know who you are already. They're just waiting for you. They got nothing else to do. There was a hype I once represented, uh, name of Dwayne McKesson. The case wasn't too different from yours. You, they picked him up on a Mark's beef and he rapped to them. And they got one lousy man. And with one lousy man, they busted a six-guy dope ring. Now, McKesson got a nice, easy sentence, just like they promised him. The first month he was in there, Billy, look at me. The first month he was there, he lost his pinky finger in a laundry accident. Now, that's the way he signed it, because he figured, all right, I give him a pinky and that'll be the end of it. Two months later, he lost a toe. Knock it off, Stone. He was a one-eyed cripple by the time they took pity on him and slammed a screwdriver into his brain. And McKesson was sharp, and he boxed a little, and it took him a while to get at him. Billy, you got no smarts. You don't know how to duck, or even who to duck. I'll give you nine days before they start finding chunks of you in the sewage system. That's what Benson wants to buy you. Sign the substitution yet. I'm still your attorney of record. Don't sign it. If Benson wants to pull that chestnut and smear the victim, I think we gotta take it out of here. Look, all I'm asking for is just give me to the end of the week. That's all I'm asking. If I haven't come through for you by then, then I'll, I'll pull out. You can have whoever you want. You lost absolutely nothing. But give me, give me the shot. Please, Billy, give me the shot. Oh, man. I don't want to say anything, but I just want you to leave me alone. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Is there anything you need? Just leave me alone. Get out of here and leave me alone. doubt whether you'll have to repeat it in court. Well, Murray, you're up later. Say hello to Donna Watson. Donna, Murray Stone. Hi, I'm a big fan. I need about half a second of your time, maybe less, as long as I caught you. Just a minute, huh? I got him back, Leon. He won't sign the substitution. I figure it took about three violations of the canon of ethics to steal him, and I've just racked up about the same, so Benson and I are a standoff. If he wants to talk to the Bar Association, we'll waltz right in there together. In the meantime, stay away from Billy Bright. Or I'll waltz in there by myself. You're very beautiful. Ah, uh, Murray Stone. What can I see, Rachel? You're not on the list. I doubt you can see him before 2 a.m. I'll catch him in the daytime. Norland, Lieutenant, 14th Precinct. Just how long has the practice of filing double reports been going on? Well, now, I have to take issue with your terms, Issue sir. on your own time, Lieutenant. All I know is when you stop a car and find the driver in possession of a dangerous drug, you're not supposed to ask his opinion of whether Lombardi is better than Hallis. You're supposed to bust him, and I'm supposed to hear about it. We kept a complete record, sir. And no carbons. And five kids this quarterback beat to a pulp and then paid off to keep quiet. Not a whisper, huh? Never heard any street talk about it? Lieutenant, get up, turn around, go Sir. silently. Well, it's just a good thing Jules doesn't have anything against us. He could have just sat on this and really used it in court. Tom, I truly don't think he would. Oh, don't you now? 
No, I don't think a jury would accept character assassination as a defense. I think they'd look at it as just what it is, grabbing for straws on the way down. You honestly think you cannot tarnish Tommy Cicero's memory, huh? All right, enumerate one more time. We have... Oh, for the love of... Leonard. We've got four witnesses that put Brainerd, Lee, and Escobar and Cicero's car on the way up. We've got three witnesses that put Bright in with the other three on the way back. We've got the Super Bowl ring. Blood samples on everybody's clothing. Tire tracks, soul marks, forensic positive link-ups on two of the four, and possibles on the other two. Any witnesses, any physical evidence, anything at all to explain what in hell he was doing with them in the first place? No, but the assumption. Yes, the assumption. That he saw these kids who needed help and he picked them up to lay a few bucks on them and preach a little jockstrap gospel. That's the assumption that Benson will kick right through the nearest transom. You're seriously thinking of taking the deal? Gene, which would you rather do? Take an early deal that at least looks like they came to us or put on a case in chief and have to eat it. Well, I guess I'd rather go into court and try the case on its own merits. Well, I think maybe you're going to have to wait till the next one, Parker. I knew someday I'd actually meet the wrath of God. I couldn't catch you last night. I didn't want to wake up your wife. But well, you caught me. I got my client back, Gene. I'm going to break precedent and disclose my defense. Oh, come on, Murray. I just listen. Because I want you to carry every word to your boss. If he's got big eyes to make that deal with Benson, and he must, that's keen with me. But I won't be part of it. Here's what I will do. I will plead him not guilty. I will call all the witnesses Benson would have called to smear the jock. And if necessary, I'll put Bright on. He will testify as to what happened. There will be nobody to refute it because you will have already copped the other three. The upshot will be that the prosecution will look like fools. You and Thomas Q. Rachel will look like the prime dingbats of the decade. You sound like you enjoy that. Don't put it on a personal level and don't stick out your lower lip at me. I'm dealing in the ice-cold facts. Ice-cold threats, you mean? Gene... If you're upset by my manners, don't make me a son-in-law. Just carry my message to Rachel. But that's not all of it. I thought it explained itself. I want a dismissal of charges against William Bright. Now, can you retain all that? You know what rankles me, Murray? I don't care what... Shut up. What rankles me is you're the righteous wrath of God this morning. Benson's a tastier kind of hypocrite than you. At least in private, he doesn't mind letting his tongue hang out. Rachel just might call your bluff. Not in this life, sweetheart. Not in this life. Hey, man, you're not supposed to be in here. Well, I'm not here because I love the work, man. Hi, Billy. Billy? Hey, Billy? You got the wind wings today? Security wing all by himself. No, we won't give him anything to wear. 
We just put him under restraint. What do you mean, in a rubber suit? No, Murray, not in a rubber suit. We just leave the manacles on, and I'll make sure he's comfortable. Hey, it's a good thing that guy was in there mopping up, because I don't think those other three clowns would have called us. Take it easy. Yeah, thanks, Randy. I'll, I'll see you. Second shave in ten minutes. I never learn. How's it going? Fairly well. I'm a little shocked, but it's true. Uh, listen, I did have a chance to think one thing out, and that's the thing about the second trustee. I um, I don't want to block you that way. If you still need it, I'll co-sign. I mean, I like you very much these days, but I do trust you. Yeah. Well, what can I say? Place looks very neat. We're going badly. Oh, right now, uh, I'm kind of sweating out a plea bargain. How's it look? Well, it's how I look that worries me. I had to lean on my guy pretty heavily to hold him. What I did, I told him about the murder of Dwayne McKesson. Which? Are you talking about the same Dwayne McKesson? Yeah, same Dwayne McKesson. The same four-year-old little kid in nursery school who's got a lech for Kathy. I had to convince Bright that the informers caught hell in prison, so I thought a name specific would be more convincing, so I just, uh, I made it. But I also did a number on him that's going to make it impossible for him to ever trust lawyers or prisoners or other people ever again. He just tried to hang himself in his cell. Tried? Yeah, he's all right, though. Look, uh... What you said before about trusting me, did you mean it? Yeah. Because I'm sitting here, I'm, uh... I'm trying to bluff the DA with nothing. I've arm-twisted my client to get him back, and I nearly killed him. I keep telling myself I'm doing all this because he's not guilty and because I'm all he's got. Do you believe any of it? It came from anybody else but you? Maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> of course, it's been a long time since I've known anybody else but you. So you're okay where you are, huh? Mm. I mean, you don't think you might be better off back here with me? It seems to me if I was able to walk out in the first place, there was a lot wrong with us besides you just quitting your job. Whatever was wrong, still wrong, so I'm, yeah, okay where I am. For the time being. All right, for the time being. Ah, Murray, you don't stop loving somebody. But that doesn't mean it's a good idea to live with them. Yeah. I hear you. Okay. I hope your bluff works, babe. Yeah. Mr. Stone, Mr. Benson wonders if you're free just at the moment. At the moment, yeah. You've been a PD for a very long time. Now that's over for you. Obviously, uh, one avenue for you is private practice. 
But I assume your father-in-law is not an attorney, otherwise you'd never have been a PD in the first place. So it can be a fairly tacky apprenticeship, even uh, with your experience. Well, thanks for cheering me up. Well, let me try. Look, let me brand my bridges right here and now. I think you're terrific. I think you're a little impetuous, but you've got million-dollar instincts. Now, this suite of offices represents one branch of a rather extensive practice in several states. Leon Zuckerwar is uh, in line for a supervisory slot, which means there is suddenly a conspicuously empty chair around here. What would you think about filling it with us? Jules, I'm going to take that rudeness risk again. You know, I grew up worshipping lawyers. To me, they were... Uh, if democracy is God, then lawyers are priests, I thought. Until you met me, yeah? I met you years ago. You've got nothing to do with the law. You clowns with your franchises. It's just a prop to you. A prop, huh? It was some prop when I walked away from a perfectly gorgeous damage suit to defend a black sharecropper who'd been framed. It was some prop when I walked him out of a courthouse, you'd be afraid to walk past. It's those cowboy movies that get you the damage suits. One shot in ten, you treat the law with a certain amount of respect, and you want credit for it. What about the other nine, Todd? I see. And where have you spent half your life, huh? You never bought a donut and coffee for a marshal you'd rather have shot? You never stroked a judge in chambers who needed softening for a case later in a week? No, oh, face it. It's a punchline of a very old joke. We've established what you are, and now we're just haggling over the price. I don't know what we're haggling for at all. I'm not your type. Thanks for the offer. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't jump so fast. Other people will be talking to you. I'm simply trying to say that we have a whole range of areas. Other people where... will be talking to me about what? Why? They went for it. <laughs> you knew and I didn't. They went for it. <laughs> At this time, Your Honor, the people will formally drop their complaint of 187 PC against the defendant, William Bright. We're not satisfied with the quality of our case, and we have no wish to obscure the substantial issues we plan to raise. We ask that the Bright case be dismissed. Thank you, Mr. Carey. The court will, of course, accede to your wishes. If I may be personal for a moment, I must confess to a certain amount of pride. Now, this is a time in the history of our tiny, battered planet when the principles on which our country is founded are undergoing harsh and concentrated criticism. We've been accused of hypocrisy, to say the very least. And yet an occurrence like this, one would hope, might give some of our more severe critics pause to reflect. To reflect and to ponder in how many other places in this world could such an occurrence as this have taken place? I should like to commend the district attorney's office for their vigilance and scruples. When justice is served, there can be no real losers. In the words of Winston Churchill, democracy is the worst possible system, except for all the other systems. The case here entitled People versus William Bright is hereby dismissed. The former defendant is discharged admonishes the spectators there must be no demonstration of approval or disapproval we will take a 10 minute recess and i remind spectators if they leave their seats they must not expect to find them vacant when they come back <laughs> you all right oh what you hear the man discharged that's you take a walk Go to the Hindu Kush. Only remember that half the gurus there are probably undercover knocks. You're welcome, Billy. Goodbye. See? It didn't hurt. I'll break the trial in a couple of days and you'll come out smelling like a rose, huh? What are you going to do? Oh, sleep, eat, fool around. Eventually? I don't know. So you know the, uh... The other day when we had that little fight, I... I wouldn't fight you, Gino. You look sneaky strong to me. Oh, I said something about your being being righteous and, uh... Well, what I... Yeah, well, forget it. 
If this trial was like any other murder trial, like the three others going on down the hall, with no spectators, no reporters, and an empty courtroom, that schnook of mine would have still been sitting here, and I probably would have copped him a long time. No, you wouldn't have copped him. Well, maybe six months ago you might have, but not anymore. That's uh, what... That's the way I'd like to do my job. Yeah, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know what Winston Churchill's talking about. Take care of yourself. What are you going to do, Murray? Uh, go out and set up a practice where nobody needs you? I told you, I don't know. What do you care? Be a PD again. Stick around. Keep me honest. Well, what makes you think that's my mission in life? Because it is. You'll be back. Don't count on it, Winston. To say the very least. Might make us look like a bunch of shysters. Well, of course. Where you get your idea of lawyers from? You'll be back. Don't count on it. My object all sublime. I shall achieve in time. To let the punishment fit the crime. The punishment fit the crime. And make its criminal tent unwillingly represent the source of innocent merriment. Of innocent merriment. and bleat and bore are sent to hear sermons from mystical Germans who preach from ten till four. The amateur tenor whose vocal villain is all desire to shirk shall during off hours exhibit his talent and manage to serve wax work. The lady who dyes a chemical yellow or stains her gray hair puts or pinches her figure is painted with vigor and permanent wall of proofs. The idiot who in railway carriages scribbles on window panes. We only suffer to ride on a bucket in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs>